Hey guys, welcome to Whiskey and Sunshine Off Grid. I'm gonna be splitting up this cherry uh, wood that we have here that we cut down in the backyard. Um, so I'm gonna do that and then we'll see how it goes. I may grab some more that uh, Scott's got sawed up over there and split some of that as well. So stick around. Kind of a cloudy day here on the homestead today. Thought maybe take advantage of the cool weather and lack of sunshine to maybe saw up a little firewood. We pretty much have enough done for this year already so whatever I finish up today will just be like money in the bank. We'll probably put it in the basement for those stormy days and we don't feel like walking out to the woodshed. If you listen, you could probably hear a 10,000 watt propane generac generator running. Like I said, cloudy day. Solar panels aren't really putting out. Still a nice day though. Low humidity. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. I thought maybe we might take a little trip over to the truck and talk a little bit about chainsaws. why I use the saws that I do. Okay, as you can see, you probably notice that uh, both of these saws are steels. One's much newer than the other and one's quite a bit smaller than the other. The one on the right is a um, MS-361. Uh, I want to say it's probably 10 or 15 years old, it's served me quite well. It's been a very good saw. It's about um, 60, 65 cc, I guess. Around three, was it 3.6 cubic inches? I think that's where the, the 36 on the 361 comes in. This one over here is a MS-261C. Actually, it is a CM, which means it is computer controlled. So the computer has a microprocessor on board on the, on the saw itself that makes 
carburetor and adjustments to the saw at uh, around 60 hertz, which means 60 times per second. So it keeps it tuned to the optimum carburetor setting from the conditions. And it's worked quite well so far. I've, I've had it for a few months. I've sawed quite a bit of firewood with it. For a small saw, I'm, I'm very happy. Now, both of these saws are professional grade chainsaws. Neither one of these saws would be considered a homeowner's saw. They uh, both run quite well. And the thing I like about professional quality saws is they, they last a long time. They cost more, and I think, I think you get more out of them, really, to be honest with you. As long as you keep your gas and your oil mixed right, you don't have a lot of problem. If you do have problems, they're easy to service and get parts for. Uh, whereas some of the homeowner saws, and even some of the farm and ranch saws, they just tell you to throw it away and buy a new one. So people will say, well, you're a homeowner, why do you buy a professional quality saw? That's why. It's not that I can afford to buy the saw, it's that I can't afford to have a saw that's broke down and not running when I need it. You know, we live in the woods here. I've had to cut my way to work several times and cut my way home too. Trees come down in storms at the worst possible time. I can't afford a rinky-dink chainsaw that uh, doesn't hold its own. So, with that being said, let's get on to something a little more interesting. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, it came in and rained, so I had to kind of suspend what we were doing a little bit. But uh, anyway, I guess I was talking about the differences between homeowners and more commercial professional chainsaws. I don't have a homeowners or even a farm and ranch saw here. This this is the newest one that I that I have, so we'll we'll talk about this for the time being. I I should be able to show you the differences. So. Aside from a weight issue, the, uh, the professional saws, as you'll see, have a metal crankcase. They're made out of magnesium, and they split in the middle so you can take them apart to work on them. Whereas the homeowner's saws and the farm and ranch saws have a polycarbonate molded case. So the bottom is all plastic, then the top half of the crankcase where the jug and the piston go in drops down into that housing. So that makes it fairly cheap to make, you know, fairly inexpensive. And they're still good saws, but they're not as serviceable, for one thing. And they're also quite heavy, so that puts a saw that is in the same uh, CC range, like with, with this being a 50cc saw, you can also get a, a farm and ranch. I believe it is a 271 is the farm and ranch equivalent to this 261 that's a pro saw and the displacement is almost exactly the same but the 271 has slightly less horsepower and it's almost a pound and a half heavier so the power to weight ratio goes way down on those saws so you end up you can run one of these a lot longer the RPM is a lot higher you know it, it truly is a professional quality saw now that being said the homeowner's saw are even one step lower than the farm and ranch. That's when you get into saws that will have just a piece of foam rubber for an air cleaner instead of having an actual filter itself. And they won't have mounts. As you can see, this saw's got an anti-vibrational mount. It actually, it will, let me turn this way. It will actually flex. If you can see the handlebars. Those are made to do that. A lot of your homeowner's saws don't have that. They're solid. Everything is solid because they're not made to run for hours and hours at a time. They're only made to run for short periods of time. 
So what you really need to think about, it isn't which is better, it's which saw is going to suit your purposes. You know, like uh, out here, like I said before, we have to rely on these all the time. Uh, the, the state or the town, they don't come and clear the trees out of our road. We have to do that. That may make the difference in whether we get to work or whether we get to the hospital or whether we get to go get groceries. It, it's pertinent that we have something that works. So we really depend on them. To me, it's worth the extra, the extra time and money to invest in something that's top quality. You know, if, if you're only going to saw limbs that have come off your trees during a storm and you live in town, you know, and, and you can count on, you know, the, the service companies coming out and taking care of things for you or the town and stuff, you're going to be better off with one of those other saws. Because typically a professional saw is going to cost you anywhere from 100 to $200 more than what the farm and ranch saw would cost you. So there is a huge difference in price. You have to decide for yourself which one is right for you. Whichever you buy, you have to know a few things, you know, about how to maintain the saw. And, uh, you know, I, I've i spent years mixing my own gas. This is non-ethanol gas. You can buy non-ethanol gas in a lot of different places. Regular pump gas is no longer adequate for small engines. It It, it is not. It just tears them up. Uh, usually... This is, I typically will use a small bottle of oil. That's good to mix up one gallon of gas at a time. So if I move, use that, uh, it even says it right on it, one gallon. If I uh, use that in exactly one gallon from the pump, I know that I get a 50 to 1 uh, ratio of gas and oil, and that is exactly what the manufacturer calls for. A lot of people opt for stuff like this. Now this... This uh, was probably uh, was that, one quart of fuel, and that's all mixed. And it supposedly stores indefinitely. Uh, it's the proper mix from a saw manufacturer. Steel makes it. Uh, a lot of the different companies have their own. VP makes some. They're all, they're all good fuel from what I can tell. Like I said, it's great to store it. And it's, it's also... Really nice to run a tank through that through it at the beginning of the year and the end of the year to make sure there's no ethanol gumming up your carburetor when the saw is in storage if you're going to put it away for a while. A lot of people don't want the hassle of mixing their fuel, so they'd rather spend 7 bucks and go out and buy a jug of this stuff and know that they're good. They don't have to worry about that mix. But uh, it's very important, very important to, to use the right stuff if you care about longevity. A lot of people... They won't label their gas can. They'll they'll run straight gas in their chainsaw, and that little bottle of oil is where the saw gets its lubrication. It does. It's a two-stroke, meaning it doesn't have oil in the bottom of the motor. The only oil this gets is from the gasoline. So as you're using it, it lubricates the rings and the bearings. So if you put straight gas in there, it's only going to run for a very short amount of time, and it's going to lock up. It's going to seize. And I'm sure a lot of people didn't even realize that. But like I said, some of this stuff is, is kind of weird for me to talk about because it's stuff that I've just grown up knowing. I've been around saws all my life. I don't think about it. <laughs> I just do it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's the that's in the law of the long and the short of, I guess, the differences between the types of saws. Unless you can think of anything. Can you think of anything? No. I think the pro saws are worth it for anybody that's a, a real, you know, if you're really homesteading, you're really going to take it serious and you're going to cut your own firewood. People will say, well, I don't need a professional saw. All I'm going to do is cut, you know, one load of firewood a year. And what they're not thinking about is the logger who cut that load of tree length wood might have made 50 cuts to fill that truck with wood, maybe 50, maybe 75 cuts, something like that. You're going to take all those logs and cut those into 18-inch pieces. That's a whole truckload. And when I say a truckload, I'll, we'll edit in a picture so I can show you what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a truckload. But the guy who's sawing that load of wood into firewood is running his saw a lot more than the logger is that fills the truck. So there's that to think about, too. You know, you, if you cut corners, you know, you might get by with a, with a farm and ranch saw for a long, long time 
and and be totally happy with it. You might. I mean, I've had I've had some in the past, and I've had good luck with them. They lasted, and one I sent to Colorado with my son. He's still using it to this day. It was a really good saw. I'm sure it still is. But that doesn't always happen, you know, so it's a, a roll of the dice, and it all depends on how well you take care of it. So take care of them and make good choices. Thank <laughs> you.